Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to our second event. Today we are on the webinar project G100 2023. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. I will be the host of this amazing event and where we get the essence of the G100 Media Arts and Communication Wing. Wow, amazing. My name is Eva Rosa Sanch. I'm, I'm talking from Luanda, Angola, and I am the G100 Chair of Angola. It's my immense pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, event and to this webinar. So G100 Honest and Wisdom, brings to you the different sectors represented as the wings within our G100 movement, created by Dr. Aurora Aberdeen. And we believe it's our diversity here in Honest and Wisdom that unites us. Today we'll have the G100 Media Arts and Communication Wing joining us with their powerful women representing the industry that are here to help make the change that impacts all of us. Wow. But before that, let me present her, our global chair. <laughs> it's my immense pleasure to have Jennifer Randiff, our global chair. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Hi, Eva. Thank you very much for the introduction. And yes, uh, being the global chair and hosting such an amazing event with powerful women that we are going to be talking to is going to be a whole lot of fun and a lot of information sharing where we can actually move forward to actually truly make the change that we all desire. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about what G100 is all about. We have a vision as G100 to create an equal, progressive and inclusive environment for women worldwide. Our mission in G100 is to provide the thought leadership on what needs to be done for inclusivity, safety, economic and social empowerment for women globally, addressing gender gaps and achieving gender parity within the decade. So yes, that's what G100 is all about. More than that, it is a, it is a movement that is got to do with sisterhood, brotherhood, gender equality, empowerment, inclusiveness, collaboration, creation. And that is what makes it such a unique movement. And we all are very proud to be part of it. A little bit about what G100 Oneness and Wisdom is all about. Well, we are a group of women from diverse backgrounds, doing different things, working differently, uh, doing a lot of things that are there to empower women. So we have something that I call our methodology, so to speak. It's about engagement. It's about encouragement. It's about empowerment. It's about education. And more than that, it is about also enabling people to enhance themselves, energizing them, and we are here to help them to execute. So when we come together, we're here to inform, reform, transform. And all of us have different ways of actually doing it. So it's really interesting to know what all of us can come together to create, something far greater. So over to you, Eva. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. What a wonderful and unique view that you have gave us. And for who doesn't know us, so you have okay. the opportunity to get just a little of what is our goal and why do we exist. And mm -hmm. thank you, Jennifer, for bringing that, because it's so important to bring this awareness to everyone. Yeah. So yes, it is. to understand what we are in fact doing. So today, as I said, we are going to have here our colleagues, our friends, our sisters of G100 Media Arts and Communication, G100 Mac wing of G100. It's a sector network of women using media arts and communication to impact the world. And how amazing. How amazing. Is this? So yeah. <laughs> I'd like to really add to that, Eva, if I may. Yeah. Yes, uh, please. And I, and I love the way that they have this 
awesome mandate, which which when I read, it was like, wow, really cool. It's about, we need more women together in solidarity. Media is at the core of equitable development, having some women play at the center of leadership, various domains in, in, is important to support development and create balance in terms of freedom, capacity, sustainability. We can use our different domains to help facilitate trade and transmit ideas and innovation. So they are coming in to actually show us who they are and what they do. And I love the way they call themselves. We are the gatekeepers of information. Content creators, communicators, artists, stakeholders, and broadcasters of ideas, news, and content. Without further ado, let's just get these amazing women in and let them share, oh my goodness, what all they are, are doing and, oh, yeah. and how we can actually work together and create something cool. totally different. Exactly, Co collaborate, co-create, and co -create. Um, bringing along a lot of, of fun between all yes, of this journey. Exactly. So exactly. Let us let us call them. I will start inviting the global chair, Dr. Alex Oku Rochi, to join us. Hi, Alex. Welcome. Hello, hi, Soul Sister Eva and Jennifer. Um, thank you so much for this amazing platform. I hope you hear me. Um, it, my network's a little wonky, but I'm glad to be joining um, our sisters from the Oneness and with Wisdom Wing. And um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you so much. And that was a wonderful introduction, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> let me let me share a little about you. So. And then I will invite you to add a little more. Alex is Nigerian actress, a multiple award-winning media personality and a creative leader who has reinvented, reinvented herself at every stage of her creative career as a performing, visual and literary artist. Wow, Alex, it's, it's so nice to have you here with us. Would you like to have... Artist, <laughs> it sounds like impeccable. Come on, Alex, tell us a bit more about you. A little more. Um, first of all, I mean, I'm an artist through and through. Um, so um, I use multi uh, mediums of art. Um, I started my career more, you know, as an actor here in Nigeria, um, from television to movies to voice acted. So, I mean, that's pretty much where my claim to fame is. You know, however, um, I'm also um, a writer and I, you know, reading from poetry to um, screenplays for films that have won awards to um, books, <laughs> to blogs, to songs. I used to write songs. So, I, you know, when I say I'm an artist, I'm an artist through and through. Um, and of course, I used to, uh, not used to, but I, you know, host a show on radio. So I've done radio to, I've done used pretty much every medium you can think of within the creative industry. Um, and my career spanned over, you know, a couple of years. So I am a performing um, literary and of course visual because now um, with my company, we're doing a whole lot more visual arts. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm going to keep this very simple because I know that we don't have that much time and there are other women um, also who are joining us. So yes. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you very thank much you. for sharing this, a little more about you, Alex, and welcome to the, our uh, event of today. So thank you. So we, much. Also, <laughs> we also have with us, and let me invite the director of Communication Global Advisor Council, Frankie Picasso, to join us. Hi, Eva. Hi, Jennifer. Alex, good to be here with such amazing women. How exciting! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Frankie, and welcome. Thank you so let much. Me also, let me also share a little more about you. Frankie Picasso is a talk show host, wow. author, artist, international socialpreneur and champion for change who has been transforming lives and influencing culture for the past 30 years. Frankie, would you like to add anything else about you? Let us know a little more about you. Okay. Um, well, I'm a grandmother of 13. <laughs> I'll start there. How's that? 
Um, social wow. impact is really important to me. And whether it's supporting training dogs for the National Institute for the Blind or, or you know, supporting a sanctuary for donkeys or people um, as an artist, I, I, you know, give proceeds of my art to the uh, Mercy Ships, which pays for cleft palate surgery for children, because I think that's a really quick fix for a medical issue that left untreated could leave children, you know, either with malnutrition or death. And in, as, as they enter adulthood, they, uh, they are banished or have a lifetime of rejection. So it's a really quick fix for them. I really like doing that. And it makes me feel really great. Um, as a founder of the great of the Good Radio Network, our tagline is radio does a good world of good. And I think um, to showcase it's an opportunity for, for me and others to showcase people in the world who need a leg up, who need um, some uh, airtime, let's say, to let the world know about them. And, and it's an avenue that that is, um, you know, we're able to give to people to help them be seen. And this past year, I retired and went back to work uh, for Go Power Talk, which is an organization that bridges profit and purpose and um, is involved in gender lens investing in women. Young women um, were now in 25 countries. and um, India, Uganda, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Egypt, to name a few, and elevating them to become young leaders uh, based on, on merit and education and mentorship. So um, all while earning an income. So I'm really, really proud of that work. I can tell you awesome. that. Sounds amazing. Thank you. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for joining us today, Thank Frankie. You. Our next panelist that I will call to join us Oh, my, oh, <laughs> my paper disappeared. It's the Director of Strategy and Re Research, Global Advisory Council, Clara Rufai. Please join us. Hi, Hi. Clara. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure to have you here. So let me share a little more about Clara. Clara is a speaker, writer, podcaster, author, coach, compliance professional, wow, entrepreneur, and a corporate lawyer. Welcome, Clara. <laughs> you see, Jennifer? Wow, what amazing what? women we have here today. My God, Welcome, awesome. And thank please, you, thank you so much for having me. And um, thank you to our sisters in the Oneness and Wisdom Wing for organizing this. This is a brilliant opportunity for us to get to know ourselves more and to just bond and share our brilliance with the world, basically. So you've already shared a little bit about me and I want to spend my time um, wisely by perhaps saying a little bit else, uh, you know, a few additional stuff. Um, what can I add to what you've already said? I am the editor-in-chief of The Shine magazine um, and in addition to that, I host the Shine Capsules podcast, um, which is just the Shine Capsules podcast is a podcast that is an audio pill. That's how I describe it. It's an audio pill that you ingest or you swallow and it helps you shine from the inside out because the name of my personal brand is Shine. Everything I do is about shine, shining your Amazing. light, shining your brilliance upon the world. And sometimes when people hear the word shine, they can misconstrue it for all the bling. But it's not necessarily <laughs> about the bling. The only way that a human being can truly shine is you're shining through service, you're shining through putting your talents out there and all of those things. So that is what I'm basically about. I encourage people to tell their stories because I believe that stories are powerful. Stories are you know, impactful and stories help to connect us with the people that we're called to serve. And I believe very much in um, a life of service. So in addition to that, I can add, I'm a book consultant and I'm of course, um, as you might have guessed, the founder and the president of the Shine Zone. And the Shine Zone is a social enterprise and we specialize in leadership, in entrepreneurship, and in personal development. So I'm all about encouraging people basically to, to move from where they are to where they want to be, live their best lives, express themselves, serve others, you know, find out what it is that you have, what are your skills, your tools, your those are your tools, your skills, your talents, and your giftings, which you can then use as a tool to create something of added value that you can serve to the world. So that is, for me, that is my pathway to wealth, 
if you like. And in you know, addition to all that, I enjoy partnering with thought leaders and with influencers and with experts around the world. And sometimes, you know, that may be through either my Shine Mentoring Hub or through my Lip and Shine conference and basically also um, enjoy, you know, recognizing the brilliance of people around the world through the Shine Legacy Awards. So it's all about the shine. It's all about the brilliance. And um, I'll leave it there because we don't have that much time. But thank you again <laughs> for um, in fact inviting me here today. Our pleasure. Indeed. Thank you for joining us. So let's shine today. Let us shine in this event. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So joining next, we have the USA Country Chair for G100 Media Arts and Communication, Hahilia Lanius. Hi, Hi, so happy to be here today. Yes, I'm Ali Alanius, um, talking to you from Los Angeles today. Thank you so much for having me. It's our pleasure. pleasure. Thank you for joining us. So let me share a little more about you. Aelia is an international multiple award winning novelist, executive wow. producer, publisher, and host of the Social Good Talk Show. And and Sugar Oh. So that you must you must help me out to spell it. So because for a tricky one for Portuguese language. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. No, I appreciate that. And I feel like we're gonna come away with a couple words today. We've got shine and then we've got you know unsugarcoated. Unsugarcoated with Alia. And you know, um one thing that I'd love to add about my background that's not, you know, I know we come with our titles and we and we're so proud and we should be because we've worked so hard to to achieve them. But for many women, you know, I am a representation of a, a young girl who went through a very difficult time, which many of us have. I'm not alone in that. But I, lead, but I lead with letting others know I was homeless at 14 years old. I was um, largely hit, or I largely hit adulthood with such difficulty and, you know, a, a lack of sense of who I was and my purpose and value that I had in the world. And I've been, I'm thankful that since that time, over the several decades, I've been able to be, use all those resources, the resourcefulness that I learned to overcome those challenges to build mis businesses, become a leader in my community and around the globe, become a representation of what it means to be a fighter, to get knocked down, but get back up. And that is where Unsugar Coated was born from, where I, I feel that as women, we tend to not always tell the truth on what the journey is. We just put a smile on and we, we, we are so taught to be so tough by the, our previous women in our line that we don't tell the truth all the time about how difficult it can be. So the way that I approach media and, and what we do in, the, in, in this sector and what we, I do in my work is to really truthfully do it unsugarcoated. So um, that's a bit more about me. I'm very thankful to be here, be in good company. I know these amazing women that I get to have the opportunity to collaborate with. And it continues to be a, a joy to serve the world through media, arts, and communication. Well, thank you for coming on, Alia. I'm going to find out a bit more. So interesting. It's very interesting to see we have this amazing panel of ladies showing up and actually contributing to something far greater. Exactly. Yeah. Jennifer, I will leave you all with this amazing panel to talk okay. a little more how we can connect, how we can establish partnerships, how we can understand a little more what is G100 Media and Hearts. So I will leave you and pass the words for you, Jennifer. Thank you very much, uh, Eva. Um, it is a privilege, quite honestly, to actually hear you ladies speak and to find out more about what it is that you do. But I thought that it would be a little bit more uh, informative if we were to ask questions of each one of you, uh, having the backgrounds that you have, to be able to share that with us and with everyone who's actually listening. The whole concept of this exercise that we're doing, a project, uh, G100, One Listen Visit Project, is to help all sisters connect, to get to know what the different sectors are doing. And I'm so happy that uh, Alex there takes the lead and brings her amazing team to join us today. So having said that, we've got um, information here that says the G100 Media and Arts, the GMAC, 
are aware of the important role that different domains of media play in framing conversations and narratives about women in the different sectors and how we must elevate and improve the presentation and representation of women better if we are going to foster a gender equal future in this decade. This is all very inspiring, but I'd like to know, are there challenges also? And I'd like to pose the question to, to Alex here, is what kind of conversations uh, should we should be had over here to elevate and improve presentation and representation of women to create a more gender equal future going forward. Alex, if you could share that, please. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for that. That's a great question. Um, I, I'm just going to keep it very simple. Um, I feel like the conversations we should be having is really acknowledging the contributions of women um, in, to the society, pretty much. Uh, women are contributing a lot. Um, um, there should be a lot, there should be bigger acknowledgement of, you know, their achievements, their contributions, how they're doing things. Um, if you look at um, sometimes, you know, if you look back at the history, you hear the stories of men who do great work. There's very little history documentation of the work, you know, the contributions of women, um, you know, across different sectors. And I think where media comes to play is in us telling these stories. Whether, you know, there's a part where you say we're gatekeepers of information, but we're also creators of information. And should we be telling better stories about women, telling more stories about the impact of women? Um, from our films to our songs to our music to our just all the media should we be documenting how women are you know how, what women are doing to drive society and create bigger impact now if you look many times at women who actually are influential or who do a lot of who achieve a lot usually their success is always tied to someone a man maybe it's their husband or a father or you know it's who they were having something to do with there's always this narrative out there that doesn't exemplify or that doesn't that doesn't showcase a woman doing it through her own hard work or through her own brilliance or her own you know uh, um, dedication or her own initiative so so that's the story we need to be telling not you know putting women in a box and you know aligning them to someone who helped them to get there when we even look at men who create a lot of impact, many times the stories of the women who help them to achieve that are not really told, right? You know, so you know these are the these are the areas that I think that as women we need to do better presentation and representation. And if you look at the media, many times their headlines of women, whether they're politicians or public figures, is always sensationalized, sexualized. You know, the headlines are usually many like God. Like, could we tell? Could we focus on? The con you know, can we focus more on what's being, you know, the story in itself and not, you know, how this, you know, so there's a lot of that that I think that we as um, women in media, in different forms of media, can use our different domains to do a better representation. So I think it's really acknowledging the contributions of women. That's the conversation we should be having. Well, that's, that sounds good. Um, in your opinion right now, do you think many people are moving towards that? I mean, you guys are doing a phenomenal job, but where do you think we can improve on that? Where do we think we can improve on yeah. that? Oh, I, I mean, said to, like, to move go ahead. forward to actually help others to recognize the fact that women can actually do things. They don't need someone tagging along with them and actually can show up to actually change stuff around. Because uh, I think that's what the whole, whole thing is that we're all trying to achieve. Quite honestly. Yes. So I, um, I, I think, please. No, no, I was just saying that we need to do better in terms of, so for example, celebrating women's acknowledgement. And this is something as great as what, for example, WEF does, which is you acknowledge women by celebrating them, by awarding, well, when, when we award ourselves, mm -hmm. we're literally clapping for ourselves and saying, hey, you're a sister, you're doing great. You're a woman of excellence or you're a woman of impact. And all of those narratives are important for our younger generation to understand that women are achieving things and are doing things. Um, also, also the you know the, the the point of view in terms of our storytelling. Can we stop? Can we stop 
writing women as victims, for example. And yes, we have these yes. stories, you know, these stories and these experiences, but can we now make women the victors and the heroes and not yes. just, you know, the victims? Can we tell better, can we put women in the driver's seat? Do women have to be saved all the time? Can we just share, show a different um, point of view in terms of the women who are doing this? Because there are women in history who've led, who've championed exactly. courses, who are heroes, who are you know game changers, who are geniuses and are gifted. I feel like when we focus more on that and that, and not just you know women who need a helping hand. Or, and I'm not saying that we don't need, but I think the more these stories are out there, the more inspirational they are to yeah. women who. Yeah feel who don't have the resilience or feel like they can't do it. When you see more stories of women just like you, women who are doing it, you're inspired to do just that much. So that's what I, you know, I really. Cool. Well, thank, thanks a lot for that. Uh, I have the next question for Frankie. Frankie Picasso. Thank you, so women are powerful, energetic, resourceful, caring, compassionate, and have the amazing ability to multitask. We are fortunate to know that and recognize that. But how is it that we invite all women to choose to recognize that for themselves, Frankie? How do we go about doing that? I love that question so much. <laughs> I really do. Um, there, there was, um, oh, many, many, many years ago, I read a book by, uh, he was a, a plastic surgeon actually, and took psychology called Maxwell Maltz, and his book was called Psycho-Cybernetics. And in that book, yes. you yes. know that book, yeah. He, he said, we act according to the image that we create of ourselves. We act according to the image that we create of ourselves. In other words, our self-image is critical to how we see ourselves in this world and what we believe of ourselves. And so, you know, we tend to default to the negative. I failed yesterday, so therefore I fail today. Where instead, how about I learned from my failures yesterday, and now I know how to succeed today. And I think that's exactly. the view that we need to, you know, put forward for women. Over 40% of women felt that um, they feel less confident in their lives as a result of unrealistic images and advertising. And this is something that we really need to address. We really need yeah. to address this. Yes, um, true. Because <clears throat> disappointments and less self-worth and not helping all women be confident. So I think as media professionals and social media influencers and mothers and grandmothers, women in general, we believe that, I think that we have a duty to, to give messages to girls and teens and young girls um, mm -hmm. Let's celebrate them for their attributes rather than their physical beauty. Let's mm. celebrate and talk about, you know, the value of their intelligence, of their listening skills, of their creativity, of their compassion, of their, their communicators. They have resiliency. They're brave. They're successful. They're intuitive. They have emotional intelligence. Women make great leaders. We already know that. Women don't see issues in black and white like men do. We can pull back that curtain and we can show the silver lining. And I think we make really great team players. And as a coach, when I, because I had this question just the other day, this woman, you know, she was coming out of motherhood and going back to the workplace. What do I have to offer? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What do I have to offer? Let's look at your transferable skills as a mother. Exactly. Multitasking, exactly. communication, persuasion, listening, research, organization, managing people, little people, collaboration, and the ultimate mom skill of negotiation. You Those should, are exactly. Amazing skills to bring to the workplace. Exactly. And I dare anybody to say they're not. So <laughs> let's focus on the value that we have as women and that women have <laughs> raised them with the knowledge that they can be and do anything that they want in this world. That's how my father influenced me in that way and he gave me space to dream and instill that belief that i can attain those dreams regardless of my gender and i think that is something that all of us as media professionals can put out into the world so instead of like oh you're so pretty how about boy i really value that intelligence you are so smart i've got something in between my 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 years as well <laughs> i thought saying to my matter exactly like, you know, oh you're beautiful no boy are you ever smart you know, you're very fast. I can't believe how quickly you got that. You know, what a good reader you are. Just things that, you know, we value and need in this world. We don't, pretty is pretty, but that fades. We all know that that fades. And we women are definitely more than that. And it always amazed me that little boys, you know, show such value to their mom and they show so much love and they need their mother and you can't walk two feet away, you know, from, from, from your son. And then as he grows up, it's like women are, oh, women, 
They're mm -hmm. nothing. How can we be everything and nothing? <laughs> you know, it, exactly. Probably, how True. can we be everything and nothing? So and we, need, we have a duty to give this message back to the world that we are. I think it, it might be. Uh, um, um, thank you for that, uh, Frankie. But I think it, it'll it'll be an interesting place to start all of this that women are actually recognized and really uh, given a lot of uh, place in society. And I think it needs to start at home. Absolutely, it needs to start at home. And, and I think we as mothers um, need to really bring that home um, to, to tell people that our kids that, you know, if you really love and respect me right now, what happens when you grow up? Let's let's change the narrative there, perhaps. So probably films like that you guys will be creating shortly, and and inspiring all of us to actually bring it home first. So because that's where I think everyone actually starts inculcating new ways of behaving and and actually dealing with stuff going forward. But thank you for that, Frankie. Ah, uh, I have a question now for Alia. And it's about some women and girls may have not had the privilege of being exposed to empowerment and opportunities. What would you suggest could be their course of action using media arts and communication as a window of possibility? Alia. Oh, thank you so much for that question. And you know, I agree with so much that's been said. As the founder of a 501c3 media production company, a lot of what we do are some of the things that the world can continue to do to create that. Um, you know, first of all, it is unfortunate that not all women and girls have had equal access to empowerment opportunities. And we know that. Like growing up in America, I have one experience. You know, the women growing up in Iran, I, you know, have a different one or in, you know, and, and so to see what's happening is it's very purposeful that we keep shining a light. Um, media arts and communication can be a powerful tool to open up new avenues of possibility and promote empowerment within our community. One suggestion would be, you know, which was what we engage every single day to encourage women and girls to participate in media and arts communication programs. Uh, these are the type of programs that can provide them with the skills and knowledge that they need to create and share their own stories, opinions, exper experiences with a wider audience. Because I think a lot of young women don't understand that their story does have power. And when we in the media, arts and communication sector, you know, and through our work, show them that it does, that becomes an empowering moment. Uh, through these platforms, they can develop their voices and perspectives, gain confidence, and the leadership skills that will you know, help them grow and continue to accelerate, and then pass it on in their own communities. Another important step is to create a safe and inclusive space for women and girls to, so that they can engage with the media, arts, and communication. It's very interesting. I have a lot of young women on my team from China, and we just recently this weekend covered the LA Art Show. And it was fascinating, uh, fascinating their perspective their, that in China, that was not an emphasis for them. It was very much you know, hardcore studying, you know, law, doctors and things and, and arts is really exclusive. So giving, you know, this means establishing mentorship programs and workshops that promote diversity, inclusion and gender equity. It also means providing access to resources and tools that help women and girls to overcome barriers to entry, which we all know exists, such as financial or technological um, constraints. And lastly, I'd like to say that it is absolutely essential to to promote the work of women and girls in media, arts, and communication, as we've said, both locally and globally. And, you know, it's so media outlets, social media campaigns, and other outreach efforts become the partnerships to highlight the voices and stories of underrepresented groups. And by amplifying voices of women and girls, we can help create a more equitable and inclusive society in all. And that's what so many of us are doing each and every day. It's amazing. It's really inspiring to hear. Um, I have a, a question for you, uh, an added one. I've just picked it up. And, and, and I wanted to ask you, um, on a level of many people, as you said earlier, don't like to share uh, stuff that has gone on with them. They're embarrassed too. They don't feel it is something that people would like to hear. Um, they, they probably feel that 
if they were to share a story, what would people think about them? But I want I want to ask you, uh, what made you choose to stand up and actually talk about it boldly? Because that, for me, is something phenomenal. It's almost like the phoenix rising from the ashes. So please, please do, because I, I believe in that personally, myself. I've been through something similar. And, and, and I know that you have. And when I, I heard you speak early on, I said, I've got to actually, I want people to hear that. What inspired you to stand up tall and not play it small for you to be heard, for you Thank to you. share what it is? Thank you so much for that question, Jennifer. You know, I say that my, my, my evolution has become my revolution. And when fear and shame no longer shackle you down, when you recognize, you know, I remember when I wrote my first novel, which is a biographical fiction novel based on the end of my last marriage where I was experiencing a very toxic environment, you know, and I was raised with these very traditional values. You get married, you don't divorce, you don't divorce. <laughs> and so, you know, it's the journey of a woman learning to stand up and learning and, when I went to write that book, a lot of people asked me if it was cathartic. And I said, no, it was empowering because now I'm the, I'm the holder of the pen. I'm the owner. I own my story. I'm not, a, I'm not allowing anyone to put their shame on me. I recognize that I'm not responsible for other people's feelings, exactly. but I am responsible to let others know that they can overcome these challenges, that you do have permission to live a life based on quality and you know good health and wellness and you know so that that was really what inspired me and i just want to say that you know it to me it's service it's service in sharing my story and it is truly an honor to hear other women follow suit and feel like oh well maybe my story does matter to someone else out there as well so thank yeah, you because so it's much. It, it's it's such an awesome thing to actually hear because you never know whoever's listening to you may just say oh my god if she can do it, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? And it is so remarkable to actually have those, these kind of conversations. It's a real pleasure to have you, ladies. Last but not least, we have the amazing Clara Ruffo. It's time for women to be seen and heard, to be encouraged, and to be part of policy making. Clara, how best can we all collectively and collaboratively? take this forward please share well, well to start with i'm going to start by saying it is not time it is past the time <laughs> thank, you thank you for that but 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 we are getting there and this is why the work that i do and my involvement personally with the g100 and g100 mac is something that i carry with so much pride for me, my role, the role that I play within this network of amazing women is something that I, as I said, I carry with much pride. And when we, and the reason is because I like to be in the forefront of change. I like to be that person that is responsible for bringing about a difference, a, a change, a positive change to the world. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, you know, the world has been paying lip service, if you like, to the whole um, issue of gender equality. And today, in today's world, in 2023, mm -hmm. we're certainly not where we want to be. Exactly. And the work ahead of us continues to be um, almost laborious, but we're in a good place because I think that those conversations have started. And I think that the work of the G100 and all these sister platforms that the G100 operates and expresses itself through are so relevant and are so critical to this movement. And I call okay. it a movement. It is a movement. Yes, it is. Because just imagine by us being in the forefront, by us putting ourselves forward as mm. the women who will speak, as the women who will represent, as the women who will, who will encourage and inspire and motivate other women to mm. join the movement, just mm. imagine what tomorrow could be mm. like where we move a world where we move away from tokenism where we are there we're in the room our voices are heard and when we say things in the room it translates into 
laws and regulations and policies and all sorts of things. So I'm going to start by saying that to begin with, increasing women's participation in policy making is a basic tenet of fairness and democracy and everything that is fair, because we're not talking about taking over per se, we're talking about equality. We're saying both sides of the story matter. We're saying the man matters, men matter, women matter. So we're talking about that representation and come to think of the fact that, you know, policy making involving both sides of the story or both expressions of humanity, if you like, in policy making um, brings about a whole, like it gives you that added advantage of resourcefulness, added resourcefulness, creativity, because research has been done, proven, that mm -hmm. when women are involved in governance or in policy making, they tend to focus and they tend to bring shine the light upon a different set of issues than mm -hmm. the men would probably traditionally do. And so it covers the story, it gives us a bigger, uh, shall I say, a better story to tell as, as a human race if women mm -hmm. are equally involved and are given the opportunity to contribute or to even direct and lead the conversations and the policies, the rules, the laws, the regulations that concern them when it comes to their health, their wellness, their finances, and just the way that they participate in this ecosystem called the human race. So policy making is so, so critical. We know that. How do we take it forward, though? I think that, um, and I'm proud about this, um, to be part of this amazing, amazing, you know, team, basically, globally, that is doing something about it. We're not just looking at the problem. We're not just uh, pussyfooting around the problem and saying, oh, it's not my problem, it's somebody else's problem. Oh, I know this problem is there, but hey, what can I do about it? No one's ever been able to change the story. What makes me think that I can? On the other hand, we have come together, the G100. We've come together and we've said, if anyone's going to do it, it's got to be us. And okay. we've said, look to us, let us be basically the people who go forward and chart a different course and i believe the conversations have started strategy is needed because for the longest time perhaps people have been talking about you know equality and nobody's done anything about it so what makes <laughs> us think that we can make a difference in our lifetime well it's because we are being strategic mm -hmm. all of the meetings and all of the conversations that the g100 has had so far and i believe there's been 30 something odd meetings now, all of them are leading towards, you know, bringing about gender equality, perhaps in our lifetime, because we are basically, we're not sitting back, we're not taking a back seat, we are taking the story <clears throat> and the narrative to the people in power and saying to them, this is, this is our story, this is how we want to be represented, this is our view on this and that and the other. And then I also love the fact that we have this sort of will within a will, you know, um, um, distributed leadership kind of thing that we have within the G100. Because it's mm. not just, it's not, again, because there can be tokenism in the human race, in the world, there can be tokenism in, you know, in, in, in amongst women as well. So this isn't just a few women at the top doing whatever they want or saying whatever they want. We are actually, you know, going deep down, you know, the civil organizations and going away. We have the country leadership. We have, first of all, we have the global level. We have the country level. And we are distributed and structured in such a way that, you know, if this momentum going, we could actually meet this. So, yeah, it's having those conversations. It's having them in a more strategic uh, manner. It's bringing about alignment in the conversations, just making sure that you know more voices, more people are carried along. We have that visibility, the exposure, and we are taking seriously. And for us to be taking seriously, I suppose that's why the G100 has the kind of high level conversations mm -hmm. that they have, as I said, with the powers that be. We can only continue what we're doing through our various expressions, through the conference platform WEF, where as Alex said, we celebrate ourselves and we, you know, we congratulate ourselves basically for how far we've come. And we inspire and encourage ourselves to say, there's yet more road to travel, but you've done so well. And when you do that, it gives you the impetus and the strength, you know, to go the whole hog, the whole nine yards, if you like. I think exactly. that it's still a long way to reaching to the go. end. But I think we're on the right path. 
We must continue the conversations we've started. We must continue to celebrate ourselves. We must continue to rally women round and get those voices that, um, are, are, that are actually underrepresented because as I believe it was Alia who said, the story in the United States might not the story, be the story in, in Iran, Iran. originally exactly. from Nigeria. 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 There's never been a woman that's been a governor, apart from a woman who was there, again, I'd say it's tokenism, for three months, an interim governor of a state, much less being the president of Nigeria, just as an example. So the story mm -hmm. continues to develop, it continues to evolve. And I'm so pleased that we are the women who have put ourselves in the forefront, willing to make sure that policy changes, people take notice of you know women's issues and recognize that it is only women that can provide a viable, sustainable, you know, solution to women issues. And we will get there. We will hit those sustainable development goals very soon. Oh, <laughs> awesome. I've always, I've always wondered um, if, if we were to look at it from a, from a larger perspective and, and mm -hmm. from a wider space, I've always wondered, did God just create man and woman to procreate, to have kids? Or did he actually want to have all of us, both of us, actually coming together to create something different? It would be very boring if we wanted to have kids, you know. I had to bring something lighter into the conversation. Um, I truly believe that uh, none of us has to fall victim or prey. If each one of us was actually to stand up tall and not to feel victimized, I think this victimhood story you're very right alex when you said that we are not victims mm. and what if everywhere that we've been thinking that we are victims is the actual space of our power and potency where we can stand up tall to be it all having said that i'd like to invite eva back because i think she's got something interesting to ask you ladies as well wow what an amazing sharing i have been catching a lot of here keywords that I will share in a few minutes. But before, but before that, that, I think, yeah, you need to ask them that. about this amazing event that is up exactly. to Yes, Jennifer. So I would like to ask you, what events upcoming do we have? I know that there are a few things happening and some, some of these events we can join online. Would you like to share with us so that we also can join? <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, um, if, if this is about the Jihan and Mac wing, uh, sorry, we call ourselves Jihan and Mac for short, yes. because saying media yeah. arts and communication <laughs> can be very, you know, that's a very heavy one. Um, so when we say Jihan and Mac, you know, we're referring to the media arts and communication wing. And we do have uh, a couple of things, in, you know, in, in the pipeline, actually, um, um, from our um, uh, monthly series, what we call the G series, which we, you know, hope to kick off soon. Um, and we've got a G spot. Sorry, I see we, we we don't apologize for using terms like that because we're bold and we're vibrant and we're all of that. So we've got the G spot podcast, and of course we've got um, an, a media ads festival um, some point later in the year. However, in the immediate, we're obviously uh, curating the G hundred West Africa meetings and the Women Economic Forum West Africa, which is you know somewhere in there. But for the wing, uh, we're focused on you know. Uh, series and of course you know the g prize we have a quite a number of things actually so uh we'll just say stay close stay updated you know just follow us and um stay connected and of course yeah, you know we'll just share good. that and and would you like to tell us about this amazing women economic forum that you lovely um, are taking care of um i'd like to know more because mm -hmm. it's it's something that is totally truly remarkable so would you like well, to tell us a bit more about that, Alex? Well, the Women Economic Forum, um, this is the 80th edition of the of WEF, um, obviously. For those who know, WEF is our sister platform. Uh, it's a conference platform um, 
in synergy with Jean Hunter And of course, there's been all, you know, over 80 editions already. This is the 80th edition, but it's the first one in West Africa. And of course, we have some of our sisters from the G100 Mac Wing who are joining us in Lagos, Nigeria. And of course, sisters around the world as well in other G100 Wings on the advisory board, supporting us speakers digitally and in person. Um, yes. You're going to be over uh, 250 plus speakers. We have our D VIP, you know, plenary sessions, 18 plus, 24. Um, and of course, we're honoring women for IWD as well as, um, you know, for WEF. Again, we talked about honoring women because I feel like it's important that we celebrate ourselves. So this is really going to be the platform for conversations, connections and celebrations. How does it get even cooler than that? Seriously, it's so amazing. <laughs> Seriously, um, Eva. Are, yes, that's. We are coming to the nice. end. So, but, yes, um, we are but almost then, at the end. But before we close, I'd like you all to bring just a, a final message for everyone that is listening to us. So, what message would you like to, to leave us with? So we are inspired not to just sit and talk, but to actually be the change in action. Exactly. Is what we're <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, I, I, I would start off by saying that everyone has a voice and they should use their voices. Um, it's important for us to you know, speak about our experiences, share about, they say, if you learn, teach, if you have, give, you know, like if share your experiences, um, use your voice, um, and of course, we're here to amplify that. I think expression is very important. As I say that, there was something that Alia. I remember when I first stumbled on Alia's platform on Sugar Coated, that resonated I, just as it resonated with you, resonated with me, and I'm sure it resonated with a lot of other, you know our sisters. You know, I've been talking about you know going <laughs> something I called the naked. You know, I had the show called the Naked Talk, and um, Frankie and I have collaborated. You know, an anthology where we called I Bared My Chest. So we've been very vocal about being very you know. On sugar coated, like unapologetic. So, You've got unapologetic. to be unapologetic. Exactly. exactly. So, um, you know, women in media are bold. You know, that's the thing. We're bold. We've learned to use our voices, and we've learned to tell our stories, and we support women to do that. We're not afraid about, um, you know, putting it out there and bearing it all because we earned whatever we have. We earned it. You know, we earned it, and we earned it the hard way. So, I would say, do not be embarrassed or ashamed of your journey or your story. Put it out there, share your voice, let's hear. Don't hide, you know, again, I would reflect that as well with, you know, Clara, who's all about the shine, because it's very easy for us to dole our shine, right? We're hiding, you know, in the bushels, you know, and we have all of these brilliance and this greatness, and it's important for us to showcase that. So that's what I would say. Thank you, Thank you Alex, what amazing. Clara, would you like to add? Uh, yes, I mean, I would like to add that um, women, and this is my message to my sisters, my soul sisters globally, is that, you know, if it has to be, it has to be through me, through us. So we should be willing to do the work. We should be willing to put in the work, to do whatever it takes. And I'm glad that I'm, you know, connected with women who are already doing that. But I think that that story or that message needs to continue to be distilled downward, where, as Alex said, more people recognize that they are worth it that this fight, if you like, is a worthy one and that there is a win ahead for us. You know, that brilliant future that we so dream of, that we all envisage, it is possible, it can be done. The work it has already started. So I would just say, you know, through the work that we all collectively do, my desire is to see more women get to hear the story, get to see the light and get drawn to the light so that together we can all put our hands to the plow, as they say, and deliver to ourselves and to future generations that brilliant future that we want. And we continue to shine. Yes. <laughs> Frankie. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> I'm all that you unstoppable. You can you can make us laugh, Frankie. They, you can oh make us God. laugh. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll try. The, 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 the people, you know, the people Jennifer, we already started people. about talking about, you know, it begins at home. I think, you know, it's a top down, up, down, up approach, really. You know, grassroots is has always been the way, you know, to, to make mm. change in the world. And so we're top down grassroots. G one hundred isn't mm. just for me and you and people that think people listening might go, Oh my god, like 
they're so amazing or maybe we're not, but you can join too. I mean, it, it's still a lot of open area, a lot of real estate here where people can jump on board and start walking their talk. So, you know, don't think that you're not somebody that can make a change because everybody can help make this change. And, you know, we're, there's a lot of open area. So get on the train, sisters, get on that train. <laughs> You are all invited to join us, so let's let's go. <laughs> hey, Ilya, please. Oh, you know, first of all, I love that this session was called Our Diversity Unites Us, because something that I quite often say is what divides us is an illusion. You know, we invite other people into these stories, into what we do, and to be part of it because we want to highlight that, right? And through media and, and, and you know, Mac, as we call it, and all of our projects, one thing, you know, people always say, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? But here's what we do, and here's our responsibility. Here's our call to action. But you can put salt in the hay and make them thirsty. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're, you know, through our actions, our beliefs, and our representation. So thank you so much for letting us be part of that. I appreciate it. I hope that inspires it's, someone. Uh, it's really awesome. And if anyone is listening out there now or is going to be listening in the future, if you have got a story to tell and if you've got something to share and you need a platform to do it, these powerful women who've shared their amazing brilliance with us, I truly invite you to reach out to them because I'm going to put the link to their division, G100 Mac. I like that Mac, it has a bit of class to it, man. Um, so that they can reach out to, to you guys and and actually make an impact. I think it's time that people know that we are here. G100 is here. And we are here with 100 different sectors. People need to know that. And thank you so much, really, ladies for taking the time to share your brilliance. It's truly amazing. I mean, I've learned so much. I didn't know about you guys that much, but today is like, we'll be freaking awesome. <laughs> Off the charts, ladies. Thank you so much for taking the time and God bless all of you. And, and so carry on with your awesome work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank, thank you for having us, Jennifer and Eva. It was such a pleasure to be here. You. <laughs> thank we, you so thank much. You we thank you once again for being with us and for having joined us to talk a little about, about G100 Mac. I love that. So let's use that expression. Mm -hmm. But what I really loved, and let me, before we leave, just adding here a few words and notes that I have taken during this session that we can share. And as you all shared, come and join us because this is an open floor where you can have your voice. So let me just remember what we have talked during this one hour of our webinar. And we are talking with G100 Mac. So the, the, our diversity unites us. And G100 honest and wisdom has brought this together. So let us continue. We have talked about giving voice having voice, focus on women, but especially on the power of the stories of women and not just thinking about sensualized or something else. Let's celebrate women because what we have, it's so powerful. Let us talk about our stories. Let us not be a victim, but let make us our path. We also have, I also have uh, listen that we all women that are here and probably women and men that are listening to us. It's important to have inclusion. It's important to have diversity because it is this that makes all the difference for the future. By being a mother, by being a sister, by being a grandmother, we all have stories to pass to someone else. So if you are a woman, and especially because we are also bringing this message to women, you are a great leader. You have a lot inside of you. Multitasking, negotiate, negotiation, being a manager, collaboration, multi-skills. So use it and use it to be more powerful, regardless also your gender. And there was a, a few expressions. How can we be everything and nothing? How women can make the difference? 
how and we can do it starting in our own home so let us make the difference let's work let's ev make the evolution become a revolution let's have pride let's bring to the world the positive change for that we need g100 it's a movement and it's a movement that unites us to celebrate and it's a place where leadership is distributed so we have all these engagements it's voice amplify be bold use your voices share your voice it has to be with us we have to do it go for it join us so this is what i take from this lovely webinar from today and thank you all for being with us and join us go and see who are we what is g100 thank you all thank you jennifer once again thank, thank you, you Alex. thank you thank Clara. you everybody thank you for the time thank you and thank, thank you, you so much that was on thank the other side thank you thank you very much thank you guys god bless Bye-bye. Bye-bye.